G'day guys, I'm just doing a quick update before I move on to my next job. Just been working on uh, cleaning out all the good stuff out of my dry sump tank and I've just put this heater on. I think this is going to help me a lot. Tank. I for you guys to see. But, uh, I'll go and show you in the car in a minute. But um, the easiest clear area that I had was under here. So we're going to... Um, I've just stuck this pad on I got from the States. Uh, it's 12 volt, so I figure I can run it off my tow car when I'm at the uh, circuit. Just on these cold mornings when uh, we need to get, I oh, really struggle to get heat into the oil. And uh, I don't think that's been helping me at all. So I just made up a bit of a cable. Just to have to heat that up to set the glue. So I just got a mini Anderson plug on here. Which... Um, I will be able to run this lead across the car and clip to the battery. But uh, the main thing of interest probably is uh, I'm thinking about going to this uh, Mobile One. A little bit on cost, a little bit on talking to some um, friends I have over in NZ. We're um, running the Mobile One and uh, just trying to get some advice on oil because I run at the moment I'm been running the 1040 so i'm thinking now that i've got to build this engine again or we've got to just give the crank a bit of a polish and I've got new bearings and everything have all arrived from the states so i'm thinking if we're going to a 50 weight um i'll probably need to open the clearance up half a thou on the on the crank when they polish it um i'm not a big advocate of running thick oil through tight clearance because i think it just especially with the dry sump uses a lot of power and I don't think there's any benefit. I haven't seen any detrimental effect anyway of running this stuff and certainly it saved my ass uh, with the detonation that we've had on the last one where the bearings have had contact but when you've got a, if you were running any kind of mineral oil it would have would have been toast, you know, the, the whole crank and all the bearings. So, um, but anyway, that aside, I thought it also I'm going to be putting this together next. We just I, one of my main things was to pull the dry sump pump apart and make sure there was uh, there is wear in this thing because it it's not new. It's done about three engine crashes now, but the last time I linished a couple of high spots off here that weren't from me. Um, and yeah, there's no this is the pressure section here, so there's no wear in there. As far as extra wear, I should say. So, oh, come on, baby. So that's the first scaven section. And, um, or, or, sorry, I'm incorrect. I'm telling you lies. This is one of the, the middle scavenge. I can't even remember now. It's all on my list that I make when I pull it apart. These little O rings that they have in here are just. A shocker if they pop out when you're assembling you've got to be very careful when you're pulling this up it's quite a simple setup but this will be the pressure section here which again although you can see some marks on there it's that's actually nothing new um i rung peterson to try and get see if they had any new plates uh, for these old gen pumps and yeah he told me he had o-rings and uh seals which would be the one on the front cover which i just bought last time from down at the bearing shop um there's a couple of ball bearings uh, and these as well which i'm going to replace this time through which there's one there and there's one halfway down and oh uh yeah they'll just be a generic part so i'll, I'll probably i'll check them but I'll probably just replace them as a matter of course because this will probably be the last rebuild that pump can handle. I'm going to have to... I was just... After having to buy other pieces, I, I didn't really want to shell out the two and a half grand for a new one. So I was glad to see that that is in good nick. So we'll run that one again. But... Um, yeah, it just needs cleaning up and putting together. That will be the tonight's job before we go to bed. But, Oh, I thought I'd just show you before I get on to that. Sorry if I'm waving this thing around. I'm trying to work one-handed. So there's another job I'm working on. 
which is the uh, I'm redoing the engine mounts. But uh, anyway, stick with me for now. I'll show you where the how the heat is going to work on the tank, which with any luck will sit nicely in there. And this will get attached up onto the wall here. And uh, yeah, when I need it, I'll just be able to plug the heater in. That will screw to the firewall. But um, yeah, the I've got a little bit of compliance going on there. So these are my new mounts that I'm going to be putting in. Um, some engine plates here. This is similar to my old setup, but better. So, uh, um, oh, this is the other handed. So, and these will mount to the body. So, give me a second, I'll set that up and show you. So uh, don't hammer me for this not being very square. I've just held it in with a bit of tape. It just gives you the gist of it. Um, this will all be nice and tight and squared, obviously. It's all just hanging in there. But uh, that will give me some compliance at the front where I had none before. Uh, this is the setup that I was running. Straight onto the old Holden mounts which I'm, you're allowed to cut off, you're not allowed to chuck, um, cut the cross member, but you're allowed to cut the old mounts off and service that. So initially my idea was to run the old mount that I'd made off the uh, off the engine, but yeah, it just doesn't, uh, you were robbing Peter to pay Paul, so gave up on that and just started again. So they look pretty smart and um, I will most likely uh, box this area in and get another weld down here as well and underneath so that's really rigid um yeah that should be good but um yeah i've got a bit of time to burn now because the uh the pistons that arrived uh had the pin height 100 thou lower than it was meant to be could have been that a bloke ordered the wrong part number i'm not sure but uh, anyway, they've gone back to the States. They're very good at just quickly replacing those and sending them back. They were a great help when my panic uh, set in and I rang Summit to replace or find out what I could do. They were really good. So um, yeah, anyway, that's blown uh, yeah, probably, a, I'd say at least another three weeks before my pistons come so we can machine that thing up and Take the crank down, we've had this flywheel resurfaced, so all we're going to do is polish the crank. Um, we've got new rod bolts for the uh, rods, so they'll be resized. And uh, yeah, we've got a bore and we're going to line home this block. Because yeah, there's a bit of nastiness on these uh, bearings, I, I doubt is the fault of the crank or anything, but I'll just bring some light over here, you may be able to see. Hang on a sec. Now given the stress that this engine's seen, I'm actually not that worried and the evenness of that number one is okay. Number two has got some bits stuck to it, but the third one is really garked up and just nasty. Four's got pieces stuck to it and the rear actually isn't too bad. Um, so it's really these Sorry about the light. It's really these uh, the centre one that I was most concerned with, which um, when we've done English engines and coppers of mine over in NZ who are doing them, they certainly uh, need to loosen them up because they don't have, they only, you know, like on a six or a four, they only have three uh, main bearings generally on the English designs. So the crank flexes and bangs around and you've got to give it more clearance. So with that in mind, this is some of why I'm thinking if I can run a thicker oil and give these a little bit more clearance. Although it's not the, the standard way to deal with a Chev engine 
Oh well, yeah, you know, I just consider these things for a little while before I make that decision, but uh, yeah, you've always got to be open to, um, you know, how you can make these engines live, otherwise it, you know, it just costs you a bomb every time you make a mistake, so uh, anyway, we're making a bit of progress and yeah, we've got a lot of stuff apart, and I'm going to pull the diff out and put another diff head in it. And yeah, we've got lots of work to do now, so uh, I'm just trying to clean my parts. And I'm surprised how long I did all the head studs the other day just to get these all cleaned up. There's only one box, but man, there was nearly an hour to clean all the crap and sealant off these. And actually, there was one of them that was very interesting. I've left it out to take in for. See what other guys think. It's got, um, it looks like electrolysis there. I don't know if you guys can see that. Let me get it on something white. Maybe that will help. Where? Nah, it's a light thing again. There's pitting here and here. And here, like it's arced across it almost, which I used to see a bit of this on the boats when I was working on them. Um, but that's more had salt water involved as well, which will just conduct electricity like nothing else. But yeah, because I've got alley heads, I'm just wondering, um, you know, whether that has anything to do with it. I'll go and take some advice on them. It's the only one doing it. The rest of them are all good as gold to go again. Anyway, I'll catch you later.